thank you for joining us again um, so tell us the connection of both the cases uh, about divorce and leading up to the property case uh, uh, be uh, good for our audience to know okay well it's quite a, a unique case um, and quite a complex case so what happened is um, my husband we'd been married 30 years and my husband uh, there was an incident that happened in India uh, that prompted me to then um, take proceedings against him uh, in terms of a divorce so I applied to the courts here through my lawyer Glynis Wright and part of that case was to prove that uh, he's an owner of land in India so um, uh, he had denied that he that he'd owned um, any such land in India um, and uh, so it was my um, uh, it was my you know with the help of my uh, lawyers to prove that he does own land in India and this is where NRI came in so so, so just to stop you there. Yes. So the uh, so why did you wanted to prove that he owns a land in India? Because in the divorce pro proceedings, you wanted that part of the land, or part of the property he owns overall. Yes. Part of any divorce would be to declare both parties, houses that you own, assets, land, and part of this divorce was my husband was owner of land in India. He owns quite uh, a substantial amount of land in India. Um, and when I had uh, submitted this to the British courts, um, he had denied that he owned any land at all. Uh, so, uh, you know, this is where NRI helped me to prove that, uh, that he, he, he indeed was an owner of the land. So when you went to your sort of British lawyer, right? Mm -hmm. uh, and when they... Uh, how did you knew that he had land, land in India and why, and did he deny that he owned any land in India? I knew he had uh, land in India because um, I'd seen it, I'd, I've been to India. So I've, I've actually seen the land and I've seen proof, uh, uh, paperwork as, as well. So I knew he had uh, land in India and um, part of that, part of the case was to prove that he uh, uh, he had uh, land in India. But your divorce lawyer here in UK and the lawyers here were not able to do that, is it? Well, because of the jurisdiction of the two countries, there's only a certain point that my British lawyer can help me, then she's helpless out of this country. Uh, so, uh, again, I mention again, NRI helped me across the water regards that. Now, at um, now this uh, this land is obviously the, the the property prices in India have mm -hmm. increased substantially in past one uh, past decade. So the uh, the value of the land is substantially higher or as equivalent as land prop land here in UK. Yes. And that was the reason your husband was hiding that land yes. or not declaring that land, and you wanted to fight for it. Yes. I mean, I could say uh, they are millionaires. If you add up the houses and assets and land itself was uh, an extremely large amount of uh, land that uh, he owned. Um, it's, yeah, yes, he owned yeah. quite, quite a large part of uh, yeah. uh, the land. Yeah. At what point did you think, okay, my local lawyer is not able to help me, right? Mm -hmm. You need help in India. Mm -hmm. How did you go about and how did you knew about NRI Legal Services? Well, I did not know about NRI Legal Services. Uh, I wasn't aware of them. So apart from my British lawyer doing what she's um, doing here in this country, um, I myself set up the task of going online, um, trying to find out, uh, you know, how I can go about doing this. Where will I start? It was just through the internet that I started. Um, independently without my lawyer because she, she had no clue so uh, I, I didn't know so I approached many lawyers I approached certain family members uh, so uh, it, it was quite scary for me to to uh, to do that uh, you can imagine 
when you're sitting here having no idea whether you can trust some of the lawyers in India, you read the reviews and you go into online. I went through hundreds and hundreds of uh, lawyers' um, websites and reviews. So um, I stopped at that point, um, and then I was, it was extremely, um, it, it was, I was anxious, very anxious about this. And it was my son, Gishan, who, was, who would, uh, by accidentally, uh, see an advert for NRI Legal Services in Harrow, London. He lives in London. And, um, and, and as he walked past the, the offices, he just went in. And then um, he told them our story. And this is how he found NRI uh, Legal Services. And I was uh, absolutely relieved. So how was your first interaction with uh, your your personal interaction with the NRI Legal Services? Whom did you speak to? Did you manage to speak to Nidhi? And what was that interaction? The interaction was very good and again it was such a relief. Um, it was Nidhi that I met and it was Nidhi that initially spoke to my son. He called me and said, Mom, I found this uh, a lawyer, her name is Nidhi Singh. Um, uh, uh, yeah, I've explained our story to her. She's very enthusiastic and quite, um, she's confident. She was confident that she could take on um, our case and um, she was very reassuring. So I had not met her. Um, my son had met her in the London office. And then I got to f uh, find out that she has offices in Leicester. So this is where I met Nidhi in person in in, uh, at her Leicester office. And um, I was, again, such a relief. The interaction was, she made me feel at ease. It was such a relief to know that, uh, that there's somebody here that I can go to, talk to, without having to go to India. So Nidhi reassured us, um, she, uh, she was confident. It was going to be, it wasn't going to be easy, she said that from the beginning. So we're, we're talking about proving that, uh, you know, the, my husband has land and the paperwork, the documents going through the, um, the research that they need to go and do. Uh, and I was prepared for that. So the interaction was great. I was happy and straight away, um, uh, we started as soon as Nidhi was able to do so. I cannot express uh, how wonderful NRI have been. The, the whole team, if I can mention names, um, Mansi, and, and I forget the rest of the team, but all of them, they were unbelievable. See, what, what I'm interested in yeah. now at this point is, mm. is the, the actual case. Yeah. Uh, so you said uh, when we started this chat, mm -hmm. uh, your husband wanted to hide the land. Yes. Right? Yeah. So you have no clue r r where actually the land is. Mm -hmm. Right. You have no paperwork with you. Mm -hmm. Right. So how did you and NRI go about in finding this land and getting all the paperwork? And what was the complexity of that? Well, I, I didn't. I didn't have. I didn't do anything. All I'd done is I told NRI or informed them where the place is, where he's situated, where he's living, um, specific, specific, his address in India, and the rest NRI did. So the, complex, uh, the complexity of that was held by NRI. I didn't do anything. There's nothing that I did. I couldn't do anything. Um, other than just give them the information that they required. So once they had the information, it was then that they had done their inv uh, in investigation into how much land he owned, um, uh, the, 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 you know, the, the history. I think in, um, in, the, in uh, the, the local council or the local... Um, the uh, their their local the equivalent of their local council, it would be registered on the land registry, however it is registered in India, um, and that's that's how they did their research, which I would never be able to do as uh, somebody sitting here based here. So how they started was, 
I'd give them the details that I'd just told you that uh, I'd given them. And from there on, they did all the research, would, which would be how, who he is, first of all. He is the person that I say he is, legally. And that he owns legally, he is the legal owner of the land. And how much land that he owns. Because I do understand that if my husband was not the owner of the land. I, I do know a little bit about if the father owns the land and there's a, some co complexity about that which I'm, uh, I can't quote at the top of my head at the moment, but I do know it was cut clear in, in this case because my husband was the legal owner of the land. If it wasn't the case that he wasn't the owner of the land or, or anything, then they would have got back to me and um, give me the results of their investigation. And after the investigation, it came back that he was the owner of the land, the land that I told the British courts here. So I think there was one more uh, stumbling block. Once the land was identified, yes. once the, the valuation, once the, uh, yeah. the, uh, the ownership of the land was mm -hmm. confirmed, yes. right? Yes. Uh, your husband did try to transfer the land to someone else's name and do it that way. Was, was, uh, was. Yes. Um, before I'd actually applied to go uh, for the divorce, part of the land was gifted to my son. So my son uh, is... Um, He's 29 now, but it was gifted to him um, when he turned 20, 22 uh, at the time. It was gifted. It was, uh, he'd put uh, a certain part of that land in my son's name. So I, 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 knew, of, I knew of that. So um, what NRI then did, well, as soon as I'd applied to the British course that I was going to divorce my husband, he had then um, illegally transferred my son's name into his own name. So when it came to the research that NRI did to identify the ownership of land, they'd actually managed to find out that that particular land that he claimed was his was actually in my son's name. So I was over the moon when they found that um, uh, that part of the investigation because it meant, uh, um, again, I could prove that he was definitely the owner of that land. So once NRI had found that, my son became a party to the divorce, a third party to the divorce as a witness. So I had then um, uh, was in the court battle against him now my son was involved in, in, in this because he, was, he then started another separate case against his father uh, for the, uh, for the um, illegal transfer of the land into his, uh, his name. So, basically, so two separate cases. Yeah, so basically, this uh, is where the complexity started. Yes. So basically you mean to say that uh, so your, your husband already had land, mm -hmm. right? And then, uh, Ten years ago, mm -hmm. he gave the land to your son. Yes. Now he had transferred that land as well and into, uh, into, into his into his name. name. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, that's interesting. Uh, so then, obviously, NRI was able to help you with this complex, complex yes. case. Yes. Yeah? Yes. It was complex, but again, in my f it came in my favour. It was complex at the time because he, my son, was added to the party. Uh, uh, f for this divorce as a witness. So it's complex in that terms, but in the terms of, uh, of NRI, what they did was absolutely brilliant cause it, because it came in my favour to prove to the British court that my husband is not only lying that he's an owner of the land, but he's also committed, um, you, know, uh, you know, fraudulently he'd set uh, uh, this land into his own name for his, for his purpose, basically. Yeah. So finally, uh, is your divorce done? Is the settlement done for the divorce? Or? Yeah, I started initially, I forgot to mention at the beginning of this, um, uh, uh, this interview, was that he's, I started proceedings against him in 2014. Um, I, got, I got hold of NRI to early 2015. 
So it's taken from 2015 to now, 2018, last month it's completed. It was an extremely meticulous, argulent uh, uh, process but, uh, and stressful at the same time and uh, oh, it's much to my relief it's over with. So that's why I'm doing this interview now to you know, help other men and women out there. So finally, what is the result of the case? Are you able to prove that the property was in his name and you were able to get the valuation? Did you settlement with him? Well, after I proved into the British courts that he, he had done this, Oh, well, he c committed this um, fraudulent act. He was then, uh, then he he then uh, still denied, still denied it until uh, we were prepared to go to to court again uh, for a hearing um, for uh, to prove uh, what our findings with NRI. And it was then that he'd realised that if he did get to court, he would be in a lot of trouble. So then the hearing was cancelled, and this is where the negotiation started between him and I. So the part, negotiations between him and I, but also negotiation between my son and himself as well. So mine was, my negotiation was that um, he pay me a lump sum into uh, an escrow account in, in India, the, 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 uh, the account should be in the name of my husband, NRI, and myself. So he deposits the, uh, the, the money, a lump sum, into an account. Once the, uh, the money is in there secure, then I do my obligation, would, which would be to uh, sign the divorce certificate and some other obligations which um, I, uh, the, my husband's side required me to do. Secondly, was once the money was in there, the second obligation was for my husband had required that my son give up his land. And, my, and this is what my son did for me. So he signed the document to say that I no longer will claim this land off you and this belongs to you, um, which would have required my son to go to India to do that. So this is where, again, NRI helped us uh, achieve this by, um, uh, we did a power of attorney where, on behalf of my son, NRI had gone to India and signed the document on behalf of, uh, of my son. Um, the other point which I really wanted to ask is, you know, the, the money part of it. So mm -hmm. there was an escrow account, right? Yes. So NRI was able to transfer that money to you in UK. They, and, and again, it was... Every step of the way, it's been. We were reaching to the to the final step, but it lots. It was very worrying. But I had reassurance in NRI all the way. So once the money was into the escrow account, and once my obligations were were met uh, for my husband, um, the the next process would be the litigation of the uh, settlement to a British court, uh, to a British bank, I should say. Um, again, a lengthy process again, so um, I'd gone to the bank here and informed them that I'd be receiving a settlement, uh, a large uh, a settlement, uh, which, um, you know, they were happy to um, accommodate me. Uh, and once, as I mentioned, my, my obligations were met, um, I forget the name of... Um, Forgive me, but he's a part of the NRI team. Uh, he worked hard with the opening of the account and the transfer of the money from uh, from India to the UK. It's not easy, but it, it's um, it's a very meticulous pro process, and they managed to do that for me. Yeah. One thing which is quite yeah. interesting is in the whole process in such a complex case, mm. especially looking at the Indian legal system, which yes. is very complex. Yes. Uh, uh, Plenty of people have to travel a yes. lot to India, but yes. you actually did not travel a lot to India. Well, I was assured from the beginning um, when I spoke to Nidhi, she said, you will not need to step a foot in India, which was music to my ears, because I, it was for me to go to India, it would have been very scary for me, for, for both of us. It would, it would have involved my son and, and myself, which I, I was the last thing I wanted was to go go to India because we both work here it would mean we would have to leave our jobs and 
uh, and go out to India uh, and the cost involved in that. So that was much reassurance to me. Um, uh, and we were very happy uh, that we didn't need to go. You know, in, in some cases, some people may need to, but in, in my personal case, no, we didn't need to step foot in India at all. I was prepared to in case, but uh, they nearly reassured me from the beginning, so I was happy about that. What would be your advice to anyone in similar sort of situation, right? That uh, uh, would you recommend them to work with NRA legal services and what sort of key aspects did you really like working with NRA legal services? Well, I definitely would. I've actually spoken two or three people that I know of. I've, uh, I'm in touch with two people actually who are in uh, who are in the process at the moment. Different cases, different circumstances, um, and they have spoken to me and they feel very happy at the thought that my case is finished and, and done with. So they feel well, they feel real reassured really. So uh, the the two people I won't mention, but they have already recommended those two people. And there's another person which I intend to. Um, a take to NRI. Her case is based in Carolyn in the south, and so I um, uh, definitely I would uh, don't be um, worried. I know it's easy for, for people out there who've got uh, all cases are different, everyone's cases. But my particular case it was extremely complex. So uh, it took four years, and um, I was expecting it to take that long. Um, um, but I, um, I, I definitely would recommend NRI. Without them, I don't know if I would have been as, as, as successful. Um, without them, I would have had to go to India. And without NRI, I would have had to trust uh, my own uh, judgment on hiring lawyers out there and to me that's the most uh, the, the most scariest part of uh, in, in, initially to have gone and done that by myself uh, to um, you know uh, lawyers out there I've I have no idea God bless NRI <laughs> I really I'm, I'm I'm absolutely thrilled about I'm 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 really happy what they what they've done yeah Thank you very much for your time. Thank you very much. A thank you to NRI. Um, I, can't, I can't thank them enough. I just want to say, you know, in this testimonial, come forward if you do have uh, any legal issues, any, anything, small or big. If, it's, um, if you think it's complex and if you think it's uh, unattainable, just um, come to NRI, speak to Nidhi, and if, if it's a case that she can't deal with, she'll say so, because I don't think it's in their interest to take on a case where it's, um, you know, they can't do it. And I think Nidhi cares about, uh, well, I found she cared about me. Uh, she was extremely, um, I, I felt really wonderful with, with Nidhi. My, my situation, she very much, uh, uh, she had a lot of empathy for me. It became a little bit personal for her as well. So I, th I thank Nidhi, I, I thank uh, Mansi, and I thank the rest of the legal team for helping me. Um, and I'm planning on Nidhi to come over to the UK next month and we'll go out for a meal. <laughs>